Okay, uh, The Bloom of the System by David Foster Wallace um, is a 1986, I believe, a book, or 87, I believe, um, was his first novel, debut novel by Wallace, um, I believe at the age of 24, 25, um, and he wrote it originally as a kind of undergraduate thing, kind of study, and it <clears throat> concerns kind of a philosophical kind of... Um, because he was studying that as well. Because his, I think his majors were in like mathematics and like, <clears throat> um, and like kind of logical kind of kind of side of mathematics and, uh, with like a, a good deal of influence from like Wittgenstein and maybe Russell. But he also wrote on a uh, a philosopher named an American philosopher, kind of contemporary named Richard Taylor, and um, I think this was what started the seed of the broom of the system originally. I think, um, he's probably you know, still a student doing that, and this kind of branched off into this, and, um, basically, yeah, it's, uh, interesting kind of, I'm not sure, like, what to call it, creative fiction, I think, because there's still a lot of, uh, <laughs> excuse the cat there, um, there's still a lot of, um, different kind of, um, kind of, like, it's, he's, he, I don't know if he's honed his style quite yet, um, it's a little bit, uh, redolent of, uh, pension in a good way, obviously. It kind of reminds, I think it brought to mind for a lot of people, with me too, uh, even though I hadn't read it at the time, but, um, uh, the, uh, Crying of Lot 49, <clears throat> yeah, with the whole, like, Lenore Beadsman being a young woman at, you know, who's a telephone, like, switchboard operator, um, which I thought was an interesting kind of a job, because it is mundane, it's in the classic kind of postmodern, kind of, you know, metamodern kind of thing, where you're thrown into this kind of, um, somebody who's in, in, within the mundane kind of, um, red news, I guess, of daily life, kind of just, like, carrying out the tasks, daily tasks that are thrown into a very absurd, wild kind of thing, and, uh, that's kind of what happens to, um, Oedipa Mas, Mas in, um, Crying of Lot, uh, 49, because there's a lot of kind of similarities just in that kind of call to action where it's like a kind of not to say that every single thing has a hero's journey kind of aspect and Joseph Campbell's not necessarily completely on the you know um wrong in that respect but I do like this um Kafka-esque uh, aspect of it where Lenore Beadsman is finds herself in a very uh kind of similar to what you know the kind of almost, uh, in a, you know, anonymous characters of Kafka with, you know, Joseph K or K in the castle trying to find meaning, um, and trying to navigate through the hordes and, like, of, and annals of just endless, uh, just relentless kind of, uh, absurdity and finding that life is absurd, that there's actually no meaning to any of what they're going at. And, you know, like, just with, like, K at the end of, uh, the trial, it's like the door was locked, you know, it was, or it wasn't, open to him this entire time, so, um, as in, you know, the, uh, that kind of parabolic kind of thing at the end, but what we have here is a, kind of a little bit more humorous than Kafka, I'd say, there, there are parts, the, uh, so basically she's kind of stuck between, um, so Le Lenore Beadsman is trying to split her time trying to figure out her, uh, mother, her great-grandmother, um, who's trying to, uh, escape from a nursing home, and I thought this was kind of funny, um, because the, this whole time, there's, like, this whole entire, like, uh, epic, kind of over-the-top, um, almost cartoonish kind of, uh, storyline about her, like, you know, this, the, there was something that would happen, like, almost like an uprising of, like, you know, old people and senior citizens at this, uh, old folks' home, like, which is, like, usually, like, the most, um, tame, kind of innocuous kind of play environment I can think of, and this is, like, some, where, where Wallace uses it as kind of a, a kind of focal point for all this, like, you know, like, you know, epic kind of, or, you know, uh, ridiculous, um, absurd, uh, kind of, I don't know, like a kind of, uh, almost a cultish kind of thing where there's like a, a lot of these, like, there's, I think a lot of bizarre non sequiturs happen one after the other. Um, and then she's also trying to figure out how to cope with her neurotic, uh, boyfriend, Rick Vigorous. I thought that was a funny name. Uh, very Pynchon-esque as well, uh, or Pinchonian, I guess, um, in the sense that there's another name that reminds me of right off the bat, which is, um, Dr. Hilarious, um, yeah, Hilarious from, uh, you know, the, 
Um, and yeah, the uh, um, basically, he's trying to, he's, um, I think they both uh, work at the same place. I think she's like, he owns this like house, uh, like a publishing place, I think. And it's called the Frequent and Vigorous Place. And uh, yeah, they, um, maybe they're not work at the same place, but they, uh, they're both kind of like, you know, career minded. And, but he's also um, very, excuse me, um, you know, very, um, you know, just over the top at times and like very kind of uh, almost controlling of the way Lenore, you know, spends her time. And it's like, you know, almost like a jealous kind of uh, the archetype of kind of the jealous boyfriend, um, which even though you could argue that's almost a... Um, a bit of a cliche of that jealous boyfriend kind of aspect, but I did, I thought it was like Wallace wrote him in a believable enough fashion that it warranted that, and, you know, he could get away with that. And then, yeah, but there's also a, another f even funnier part of the cockatiel, um, the cockatiel that is like, talks and like, says all these very, uh, super kind of outrageous, unbelievable kinds of things, like, like it'll, uh, out of nowhere, we'll just, like, say something like, you know, like, like, a random fact or kind of something almost, like, uh, vaguely offensive, too, and, yeah, it just, like, it comes out so left field, I'll be like, you know, just, be like, saying in that kind of tone of voice, um, you can imagine, and, um, but, yeah, I just thought that out, and then there's another character, I can't remember his name, um, but one of the kind of higher ups, and he's a bit older, that that kind of owns one of these businesses, kind of in lieu or um, in, in cahoots with one of them, uh, who's uh, so fat that he's a becomes this embodiment of a grotesque body, is what I thought it was. But um, yeah, this insanely like so he's so overweight in a very in a kind of uh, um, Mr. Creuso like Monty Python kind of way, where he's. Uh, constantly devouring so he can uh eventually accumulate all of space and uh in a kind of metaphysical sense he's like i'm trying to assume like i am the subject in the hegelian kind of dialectic sense and this is i'm consuming all these things and all these uh, i'm consuming this next cake and it's like so ridiculous i, I couldn't help but laugh um but yeah it's, it's he was like his his whole entire mission was i guess his existential ontological point was just to kind of just I guess, um, devour as much stuff as he could to become, to become, like, ex um, occupy as much space as possible, but he, but again, like, in classic kind of, I guess, postmodern, but, like, a kind of mix of modern kind of fashion, um, you know, Wallace uses this as a kind of, he uses, like, he, you wouldn't imagine somebody in real life saying, like, I, I am doing that, I got, this is the reason why I'm, you know, overweight, um, or morbidly obese, like, it's, it, the, you wouldn't imagine anybody saying that, but, like, he's, again, like, the, you know, like, these characters that are aware, and even at the end, like, there's a Kafka, a quote by Kafka, where you, in the search for meaning amid the absurd, you become the absurd thing that you're searching for, I'm not sure if, um, if that's, um, what Kafka said exactly, but it's something that Wallace said that, kind of echoed him uh and it does kind of get it you know like you're in search for meaning i guess is almost inevitably you you become a part of that you know you become kind of the thing that you're i guess pursuing i guess you're um yeah but that's a and then another part there was a like it's the character of uh blowmaker the Director of the Shaker Heights home, so Shaker Heights home is the uh, retirement place where uh, Lenore's great grandmother is staying at. And, but yeah, there's uh, um, David Blokemer also has a kind of uh, motif where he keeps over-explaining things. I guess he uh, he just takes like a long time to get, you know he goes in like kind of a roundabout and fractious style of talking that's like totally. Um, that took a little bit longer for me to get what that trope was, or what that kind of trope was about, but yeah, um, um, but yeah, he, it takes, like, a long time for him to finally get around to, like, why they, f they feel like they'll find that, um, Lenora's great-great-grandmother, because she's, like, 
uh, she had like you know a kind of a status there, like a, a almost like a um, heroic kind of status where she was lauded to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, there's uh, other parts. Um, that, you know, all this goes into service of a comical effect. But yeah, there's a... Anyway, so that's kind of all I have for today um, on the Bruin system. I definitely recommend it. Um, again, it was kind of maybe a little bit uh, close to early, you know, you know, his stuff earlier was um, that this and maybe Bruin, or sorry, the girl with curious hair, both uh, were kind of a little bit slightly, I guess uh, the latter in that sense was a little bit more like akin to the Brat Pack style with kind of like, um, with its, uh, more open use of tropes, I suppose, but this was pretty close to like me, maybe to, to Lilo and Pynchon, but yeah, aside from those comparisons, which, you know, are perfectly fine in a sense, everybody has to start somewhere, especially for a first book, it's pretty, really impressive, I thought, um, but yeah, he, um, yeah, it's definitely kind of a venture into the absurd and the kind of hyper- surreal not surreal but just kind of uh hyper real kind of a aspect of things being realer than they i guess in a simulacrum kind of style um but yeah that's uh, all i have for today thanks for watching